Hello everyone, welcome to this video about star schemas. Today we are going to learn how to build dimension and fact tables according to the star schema methodology. In this example, we are given data in Excel format. We need to replicate this data into the database, split the data into multiple tables, populate those tables and perform a couple of queries. We are going to use MySQL but not the data modeling feature with the visual representation of the entities. Instead, we are going to use pure SQL. This is the original data set. There is a calendar date column, there are customer columns, there are payment columns, and the amount column per transaction. I think it's pretty obvious. We need three dimension tables and one fact table one dimension table for the calendar date, one for the customer, one for the payment, and one fact table that would include all the primary keys from the dimension tables plus the amount per transaction. The first thing we need to do is to load the data into the database. There are many ways of doing that. One of them is using this website, which converts Excel data into SQL statements. In this case, it provided the create table statement with all the columns, of course, and the insert, insert statements to populate the target table. Let's run this code. We create the table and then we run the insert statements to populate it. Here we are. And we can see the data into the database right now. We have 30 nine records, exactly as many as in the Excel dataset. Now it's time to create the dimension tables. Typically in a dimension table, you have the natural key, which has business meaning and already exists in the dataset, and the surrogate key, which is system generated key and has no business meaning at all. Usually it's a sequence, however, it could be a combination of multiple columns. In this case, in this example, they are both missing, so we are going to create them. The first dimension table we are going to create is the date dimension table, date dim. Date key is the surrogate key in this case, and it's also a primary key. And of course, we need an extra column for the calendar date. We populate this table using a select statement. We select the distinct values of the calendar date from the original dataset. We only want the distinct values. A dimension table only needs to have distinct values. We don't want duplicates. Let's run this query and create a date dim table and populate it using the insert statement and check the values. So we have six records of unique dates. This is what we want in a dimension table. Perfect. Let's proceed with the customer dimension table. This is a bit trickier and the reason is we need the surrogate key, which is a sequence and would serve as the primary key of the dimension table, but also a natural key, which is missing from the original dataset. Typically, there is a natural key with business meaning in the original dataset. But since we don't have it here, we are going to generate a unique identifier ourselves. Of course, we have the rest of the columns here. In order to populate the customer dimension table, we need a base query, which would bring back the distinct values of these columns. As we mentioned, we don't want duplicates in the dimension table. So we select the distinct values of those columns from the original dataset. And on top of that, we have another query, which would provide the unique identifier for the natural key. To this end, we use the run function, which provides a random number between zero and one. We multiply this number by 100K and we use the floor function to get the integer part of the number. So if we run these queries now, let's create the customer dimension table and then populate this table with the insert statement. 
and I forgot the select statement. Sorry about that. Let's write it down. Select star from customer deem and let's see the data. So we are getting eight records, unique, actually eight unique records. Perfect. We have the customer key, which serves as the primary key and is a sequence and the customer ID, which is a natural key and we assigned random values into this column. Splendid. We apply exactly the same logic to the payment dimension table. We need the surrogate key, which is a sequence and serves as the primary key and the payment ID, which is a natural key. The rest of the columns, of course, and exactly the same insert statement. So we select the distinct values of those columns because we don't want duplicates. We generate a random number and we populate the table. Let's run the queries. We created the table. Let's populate it now. And let's see the data. So we have three unique records. It's time to create the fact table. As we mentioned in the fact table, we store only the primary keys from the dimension tables and the amounts. So only primary keys and measurements, right? In this case, we need to store the date key from the date dimension table, the customer key, which is the primary key of the customer dimension table, and the payment key, which is coming from the payment dimension table. The amount is coming from the original data set. Let's run the code. Populating the fact table is a bit more complicated, but not too difficult. First, we need to select the amount from the original data set, perform a left outer join with the date dimension based on the calendar date, a left outer join with the customer dimension based on the customer email, customer brand, country and status, and left out a join with the payment dimension table based on the method name, method type, status, status description. Those multiple conditions here would have been avoided if we had a natural key in the original dataset. But don't worry, in most cases there is a natural key in the original dataset. We are running this query now and let's see the outcome. We have 39 records, exactly as many as in the Excel file. Star schemas make things very easy when you want to perform analytical queries. For example, here we want all the transactions which are completed. We select star from the fact table, we perform a left outer join with the payment dimension table based on the payment key where the payment status name equal completed. So let's run this code. We are getting back 28 records where the payment status name is completed, right? As you can see here. This example is the perfect example to demonstrate the convenience of using a star schema for your analytical queries. We need the total number of transactions and total amount per brand on the 5th of January where the payment status is completed. For the total transactions number, we need the count function, and for the total amount, we need the sum function. In the where statement, we need to filter the calendar date. It has to be equal to the 5th of January 2021, and the payment status name has to be completed. Last but not least, we need to use the group by close and group by calendar date, customer brand, and payment status name, since we are using them in the select statement. Let's run the query and we are getting back one record. So this customer, brand ABC, made four completed transactions on the 5th of January 2021, resulting to the total amount of 306. Back to the Excel file to verify the results we got from the query. I have already filtered the columns so the date column is the 5th of January 2021. The customer is brand ABC and the payment status is completed. So if we add all those numbers here, we are getting back 306 
that is the same amount we got back from the query. This means our star schema is working and we are correct. Let's summarize quickly. First, we loaded the data into the database using this website, which converts Excel data into SQL statements. Then we created the dimension tables, the date dimension table, which only had a surrogate key and natural key wasn't necessary in this case. However, for the customer dimension table, we used a natural key and a surrogate key and we learned how to generate random numbers using the rand function and the floor function in order to populate the natural key. The same with the payment dimension table. We also created a fact table here, which stores all the primary keys from the dimension tables and the measurements. In the end, we run a couple of queries to validate and witness the convenience of our star schema. That is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something new. Please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe.